Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome back to the FEU Career and Placement Office Pre-Employment Preparation Talk or PEP Talk webinar series for the mid-year of school year 2020-2021. I'm sure for the regular PEP Talk viewers, you know me already, but for those watching us for the first time, this is Ron Gascon, the coordinator of the FEU Career and Placement Office or CAPO, and I'm your MC and moderator for this afternoon's webinar. 
Pep Talk is a regu regular virtual series designed to prepare the graduating students for employment by equipping them with the necessary knowledge through focusing on various topics delivered by industry professionals and experts. And on your screens now, you can see our previous Pep Talk webinars conducted from last semester up to the current. You may always rewatch them at the, your most convenient time at the Career and Placement Office official Facebook page and at the FEU YouTube channel. Today's webinar is also being live streamed via Microsoft Teams and both the FEU and Capos official Facebook pages. To participate in our question and answer segment later, you may submit your comments and questions anytime by posting at our conversation page. It can be found at the right side of your screen if you're using a desktop or at the Live Q&A tab if you're using a mobile phone or other portable device. For our viewers watching through the FEU Facebook live streaming, we encourage you to engage with us by posting your questions or reactions on the comment section as well. So we really anticipate your participation as we progress in our webinar. We live in a world where education is of prime importance. Over the years, the goal to pass the board examinations has become part and parcel of students' university life design. The success or failure in these exams holds the key to the future of a student's career decisions. It all starts with a future forward mindset, perseverance and grit to embark on a journey of preparing for the board exams and successfully hurdle this inevitable challenge after graduation. Are there really any formulas on how to pass the board exams? How relevant are the board exams results, especially now in the time of a pandemic? Why should we aim to be a thumb natcher and ace that board exam? FEU Career and Placement Office is proud to present to you today's pre-employment preparation talk or pep talk webinar titled Thumb Natchers, How to Ace the Board Examinations. This webinar episode is brought to you by FEU Capo in cooperation with our digital media partners, Shanghai Syndicate and the FEU Marketing and Communication Office. Stay tuned as we discover more how we can effectively prepare to pass the board exams that will open more doors of career opportunities from today's pep talk resource speaker. Just a reminder, please make sure that your microphones are on mute to avoid causing any unnecessary noise. Thank you for your cooperation and let us maximize our time by learning from today's webinar. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the opening remarks and introduction of our resource speaker, may I call on the director of the Career and Placement Office, Ms. Maria Carmencita Babes Suva Alfonso. Hi, Ma'am Babes. Good afternoon. The screen is yours. Hi, good afternoon, Sir Ron. Thank you very much. Our distinguished speaker, our Senior Vice President, uh, Maria Teresa Trinidad Dino, our Assistant Vice President, Generoso Pamitan Jr., deans, faculty members, Students and co-employees, good afternoon and thank you for taking a time out of your busy schedule to join us today. In the past two semesters, we learned how to cope in this new normal. We learned how to navigate and adjust on how things will be, even after the pandemic. We don't wait for things to happen, we make things happen. The FAU Korean Placement Office, or CAPO, has successfully run a series of webinars last semesters. Um, a total of 15, if I may say, uh, to give our students the basics of working and finding a job amidst the new normal. We have also successfully rolled out all other online activities designed to whether they want to have a successful career, build their own empire, or become a freelance professional. With the advent of pandemic, our pep talk has covered numerous subject matters, not only on pre-employment preparation, but other important topics that would equip our students with the essential know-how on entrepreneurship, personal development, as well as continuing education such as finding scholarship abroad. Let me show you a short video clip of CAPOS activities. Video please.
please check out our event posters and calendar of activities. We shall be posting this in the, F in the official FEU social media sites and Canvas. As we continue to provide our students with, and graduates with meaningful activities, CAPO shall deliver more programs beneficial to our students to thrive in the new normal. For today's episode titled Tom Notchers, How to Ace the, the Board Examination, we are grateful to be joined by our resource speaker who is a top six board passer of the Philippine Nurse Nursing, nursing Licensure Examination and currently a USRN Supervisor of Optum. Optum, one of FEU Capo's trusted industry partners, is a US-based company and one of the world's leaders in healthcare solutions and technology, which is also part of the prestigious Fortune 500 companies. Optum presents itself as inclusive, diverse, and trusted brand with different career opportunities available to be explored for students and graduates of health, non-health, and business-related courses. We are indeed lucky to have invited our resource speaker today as he will give us valuable insights and knowledge about how students and graduates can effectively prepare for board examinations, which will guide them to a successful career path. This topic is very relevant as we continue to adjust and thrive in this new normal way of doing things, not only in school, but in the world of work as well. On that note, I would like to end my uh, I would like to end with my usual reminder. While it is not going to be easy to sort out the challenges that we are in, um, always remember the, our mantra: "Be brave," because Tamaraos have always been resilient to whatever comes our way. Always remember that. And now, without further ado, allow me to introduce our resource speaker. He's an American Nursing Credentialing Center or ANCC Board Certified Nurse Case Manager and registered nurse, both um, here in the Philippines and in the US. With a master's, he has a master's degree in nursing, major in medical surgical nursing, and he has over nine years of experience in the healthcare industry. He has comprehensive background that encompasses healthcare across different paradigms, from the academic and clinical setting to telehealth nursing and utilization management review. His area of expertise include professional nursing, case management, disease management, utilization management, preceptorship and training, leadership and management. At present, he is the assistant manager for clinical support staff and USRN supervisor of Optum. Ladies and gentlemen, on your screen, Mr. Mark Ray Espinoza. Good afternoon, Sir Mark. Thank you for being here. The floor is yours. Thank you so much. It's such an opportunity to do this. This is my second time doing the pep talk and it's always a wonderful experience to share um, what I've learned so far. What are some of the things that are part of fails to look forward to what's going to be next? It never fails to prepare and it never fails to be ready. So that's why we're having this talk right now. Now, one other thing, though, if you're not going to be taking the board exams and if you feel like, wait, what, what am I doing here? This is also going to be helpful for the major exams that you're going to be taking within your academic life and even after then. So let me just talk a little bit about myself. My name is Mark Ray Espinoza, and I always feel and I always believe that pictures speak louder than words. So I wanted to show you just a little bit of what I I do what I like to do. So just like you, I like to travel. Um, I have a hobby and that's photography. I like to hang out in coffee shops. Yes, even during the pandemic, I just take a little bit of time there uh, to decompress, de-stress, make sure there's the whole social distancing and making sure that uh, you wear a mask in between bites. I like to host and um, that's a photo right here where I was hosting in the, um, in the Manila Hotel. And of course, as the pandemic rolled in, that's how we look like in the office. Masks on, some yellow tapes preventing us from sitting in some, sp uh, some seats. It's really gotten our world upside down, but we have nothing better to do than to go with the flow and just be really resilient about things. I wanted to introduce you two to my team. As Mumbabe said, I am a clinical supervisor, so I am one of the people managers in Optum, and this is my team. We are, uh, this is a group of clinical support staff 
Um, some have graduated from allied health professions. I have Philippine registered nurses and US registered nurses on my team. And, you know, we, that's us having fun and just going out. And this one's in Tagaytay, you know, before the pandemic, as you can tell, but we try to have fun. That's how work is supposed to be. And of course, um, traveling with my family and traveling with my friends is one of my favorite things to do, much like you. And I know that a lot of us are excited to just reclaim that sense of normalcy again, where you can just travel and not be worried about um, the pandemic all around us. So let's just hang in there. We know that there is a bright light at the end of the tunnel. Get your vaccine so that we can get back to normalcy and hopefully we can reclaim the life that was ours um, before this whole pandemic rolled in. Now let me walk you through my career journey and one thing that I appreciated as I partner with Kapo is they really prepare you for what's out there because sometimes our academic life is a vacuum. It's so different as we step out and let me contribute my share there by talking about my fair share of ups and downs and learnings along the way. Starting off with 2011, and that's where I graduated my Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree, and that's in Xavier University at Ateneo de Cagayan. It's in Cagayan de Oro in Mindanao. Um, and so after I graduated, and this one is going to be crucial, sometimes the school does say when you're supposed to take the board exams. In our case, the school recommends that we take the second board exam so we have a little bit more time to prepare. Although some of my batchmates did take it a little bit earlier. So I took it this, um, the, the kind of like the second half of the year. I think that was around October or November that time. No, I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out to be. And I remember having this really honest conversation with my mom and I was like, I'm really not sure how this is going to end up. Um, I'm just really praying for the best, but I, I'm, I'm really scared. I'm really anxious. And she has been very supportive. She was like, and then you're just going to have to take it again if you don't pass it. Things sometimes don't work out the way we want it to. But a couple of months after that, I was, I remember I was still, I was doing to tutoring uh, while waiting for the result of the board exams because of course you can't practice yet. Um, I was there and I just got a text message from a batchment and they were like, Mark, congratulations. So it was in 2012 that we got the results and I managed to rank six in the board exams. So that was 66,000 plus examinees with less than 30% passing rate, but I managed skills, everything we've learned in school, anything we everything we've learned in our and in, in our skills lab, that's something we want to we want to practice. So I got to work in the emergency room, the medical unit, pediatrics, obstetrics. But at the same time, on my off days, because I did get um, to make it to the top notchers list, I got offered the opportunity to be a lecturer. And you know that in review centers, I got to do that. And I also got to do that in a university. It's Bukidnon State University. And she was one of my mentors and one of my professors when I was doing my master's. So I also wanted to study my master's while I was juggling all of that because I felt I wanted to expand my knowledge base so I can share more to the students that I'm working with and also so that I can hone my skills. So that's why I majored in medical surgical nursing because I felt like that was my favorite subject and also because that was the path that I wanted to take. So it was in 2013 that I graduated my master's in nursing, major in medical surgical nursing. So at this point, I was about to have two years of experience and I already have my master's degree. I even have some academic background. So I figured what's next for me? And for a lot of nurses, and I know not everybody's a nurse here, but you probably know one. There's probably one in the family. You probably have relatives. And we know that sometimes the next step is working abroad, right? So I was on that path too. I figured I have enough experience. I have um, secured my, my academic background and I feel like I have an edge now. So you'd think it'll work out for you, right? But it was in 2014 that I actually didn't get any responses. And so of course you're gonna have that whole moment of self-doubt and you're gonna ask yourself, <laughs> but ultimately you move on and you look for what's next for you. And fortunately I started in United Health Group Optum because I was referred to a friend there. 
and there was what they called a nursing academy. Now, this seems too good to be true. So the nursing academy essentially is you are going to be paid to review and take the NCLEX, which is the board exams for U.S. registered nurses. So I was like, are you sure about that? Is this for real? And yes, it was. The company sponsored our review. So we did have several months of review. They sponsored our application and even the taking of the board exams. And that was something that I was, I'm was. i still really so grateful for that I got to do. And where in the world can you find a company that's going to pay for everything and is going to pay you to study, right? So that was a perfect setup for me. And within that year, I managed to pass the NCLEX. So I got my U.S. registered nurse title. So I asked, what's next? So within the company, I got a job as a nurse case manager. And here it's telephonic case management. We work with patients telephonically. They're usually in the U.S. and they have been recently discharged from the hospital. We go over their discharge instructions, make sure they have the right care, the right doctors, the right medications, the right lifestyle to support a healthier life and to support their recovery and prevent readmissions. And that was a very fulfilling experience for me. It's like being a nurse, but just being on the phone to do it. Now, it was 2016 where I got the opportunity, again sponsored by the company, to sit in for yet another examination. And this one is for the board certification by the American Nurses Credentialing Center for my nurse case management um, BC. And that's why you're going to see that you saw that at the end of my name, the CMGTVC, that's Board Certified Case Manager. And the thing about it is, Everything that I learned as I prepped for my exam is something that I learned here, not the concepts, but the techniques. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later. Now, it was in 2017 that I got to be part of the clinical leadership team as in a promotion as a management trainee and eventually an assistant manager. And again, that's my team. I figured that I guess I want to handle people. And so that became the career path for me. It was in 2019 that I again sat for yet another certification sponsored by the company. And this one is for MCG, which is one of the top organizations certifying utilization management. And this one for, is for a care guideline specialist. And of course, um, I managed to get it again, applying those techniques that I was talking about. And then just last year, 2020, I managed to get the Sages Award, which is one of the most prestigious awards uh, given in the company for our clinicians. So United Health Group Optum is actually a huge company, and you're going to find out later. We have footprint in a lot of countries, and we have 49,000 clinicians working for the enterprise worldwide, and among those I managed to get uh, to be part of the 130 uh, stages of clinical services. Unfortunately, it was pandemic, so we couldn't go to the U.S. to receive the award, but they did give us some really nice gifts and freebies and some cash. And I'm also using the ring light that came with that. You can probably see it reflecting on my glasses right now. So it was one of all, one hell of a ride for me because it's ups and downs. It's about life giving you curveballs of things that you don't expect and even better opportunities that open for you. Now, in my whole career journey, I'm going to emphasize the three things that happened there that's going to lead us to our discussion now. Me sitting for the board exams in the Philippines, the nurse licensure examination by PRC, my case management board certification, and my MCG certification. All of those are certification exams, and all of those are opportunities for me to apply these things that we're going to talk about. So now let's get to it. The question is, what can you do to ace the board examinations? Now, I know acing the board exams or acing your tests, maybe just to drive it closer to home, seems a little ambitious. But remember, you guys, sometimes you want to aim for the stars so that if you miss, it lands on the moon. If you don't make it to the top, at least you passed your exam. Because if you're going to aim low and you fail to hit that, then you're going to end up low. So I want you to have that type of mindset. Aim high. Now, I'm going to try to divide that into three very important aspects that you should manage. First is stress management. Second is time management. And the third is going to be study management. 
Now, first, let's talk about stress management. Now, stress management is having the right mindset. And that's very important when you're studying, very important when you're learning, and very important when you're trying to decide what to do next. You need to have a clear mind and you need to do what's next. You have to push yourself. So let's talk about one of the things that I love doing in order to manage my stress better. Reward yourself. Now, as humans, it's always important for us to usually have a goal in mind and to have a reward in mind. Like, for example, if you had a really difficult project or a really difficult requirement and you know there's no grade associated to it, do you feel you're going to be motivated to work hard for it? Do you feel like if you like somebody, but you know it's really, really, really never going to work out, are you going to put in an effort? If, for example, you want to do something, but then there's really no way for you to, to be able to do that. Are you going to put in the effort? So unless there's a goal or a reward in mind, sometimes it doesn't motivate us to pursue it. And that's why for me, rewarding is very important because number one, it affects your motivation. It gives you something to look forward to. Now, I, I was told that maybe we have some psych folks on the, on the call, and I hope you guys are. And Let's talk a little bit about conditioning. That's the second point. Now, it's very, I know it's very classical, it's very Pavlovian, but sometimes our mind works that way, right? You anticipate reward after doing something, or you anticipate something after you do something. And in this case, when you're studying or preparing for your exams, if you learn to reward yourself, you know that with every hard work you put in, there's going to be a reward in the end. And hence, you're going to be conditioned to do the effort, put in the good work in order for you to have a reward after. And although it sounds a little primal, but it does give us a little sense of motivation. It helps rewire the brain to know that, hey, there's going to be a reward in the end after all this hard work. Now, what are rewards? It doesn't just have to be a cake slice. I know there's a, if you finish a whole chapter, for example, and then you tell yourself, okay, I'm going to be able to and now check my Facebook feed, my Instagram feed, a few TikTok videos. That sets you up to look forward to finishing the content. And maybe it's even online purchases coinciding with any Lazada or Shopee sales. It can be anything that gives you a sense of fulfillment or a sense of happiness, something that boosts your dopamine level so you feel happy about the reward that you're getting. Let's talk about the second one. Now, the second one is about taking strategic breaks. Very, very important. Now, strategic breaks doesn't mean taking eight hours of sleep right in the middle of studying, even if you're going to get another eight hours sleep so, of sleep in the evening. I said strategic. So it has to be reasonable and it has to be within the time that you have. Um, taking strategic breaks, first of all, helps you recharge. We know that reviewing can be overwhelming. And sometimes you just need to recharge because we're just so tired. Later on, we'll talk about strategies and how to do that. Second, we want to refocus because sometimes we're just so distracted. There's just a lot running through your mind. You're anxious. You're worrying about things. Sometimes it helps to take a break. And then we don't want you to burn out. We've heard of a lot of students burning out just because there's so much to learn, so many things to do. So taking strategic breaks is going to be helpful. Now, when I'm talking about strategic breaks, I'm talking about a power nap. Now, I'm talking power nap, okay, not a long nap. Now, according to some research, power naps are supposed to be around 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and it's not supposed to be a really deep sleep. It's kind of like that sleep where you're about to go into deep sleep. It's just enough to kind of give your body a sense of relaxation, it helps refresh your mind, and it helps recalibrate you for what you're about to do next. There's even this caffeine power nap that I've heard of. I'm not really sure how healthy it is, but you can drink your coffee because it usually takes 30 minutes to work. Drink your coffee, take a nap, and when you wake up, you feel a little more invigorated. That kind of works especially for for like when you're cramming, okay? But you didn't hear it from me. Another thing that you can do is actually stretch. When you study, your muscles become really tense, especially your shoulder and your neck muscles. So if you do your stretching exercises, you stand, you do, you know, your hands, um, 
it'll help recirculate the blood there and relieve the muscle tension. And if you can relate to it, if your muscle is tense and it hurts, you really can't concentrate on what you're doing. So it's important to take stretches too. Maybe take a walk. It helps circulate the brain and increase the circulation of blood in your brain. I've also heard that sitting up straight increases blood flow to your brain by around 80%. So that's going to help in you studying. Another thing you can do is just stare afar, especially for those with eye issues and eye strain. It helps to do the 20, 20, 20. Like you stare 20 feet, um, every 20 minutes, you stare um, 20 feet away, and I forgot the, the other 20, or maybe it's just 20, 20. But essentially what you're going to do is to prevent eye strain. You just want to stare afar so that your eyes can refocus, and then you can go back to your screen or your book. And then maybe breathing deeply is going to be helpful. So you just take a deep breath, inhale for a couple of seconds, and exhale through your mouth for a couple of seconds. Do that several times. That's going to be particularly helpful if you're feeling anxious. Deep breathing helps regulate your heart rate and it helps stabilize and slow it down, decreasing the sense of impending doom, especially if you feel a little bit panicked or a little bit scared about the exams that's going to happen. Deep breathing helps. It helps our patients with anxiety. It helps our patients who are about to take surgery, and it's also going to help you as you prepare for the board exam. Now, lastly, and this is going to sound a little bit corny, it is believe in yourself. Now, there is nothing more powerful than a positive mindset. A positive mindset where you say, where you tell yourself, I can't, I can do this. I will be able to do this. I'm going to ace the board exams. You look at the mirror, you talk to yourself. You tell yourself you're confident, you're good, you're ready for this, you prepared for this. You're going to ace the board exam. You're going to be the next architect. You're going to be the next teacher. You're going to be the next nurse. Do that until you believe yourself. Another thing that you can also do is the Superman pose. So you essentially just like, you know, do this. And I know that you've probably seen that in some movies. I've seen that in Grey's Anatomy. But I've also read research about it, and it really does send some signals to your brain that makes you feel invincible. And it gives you the ability to sometimes transcend what, what limitations you set for yourself. That's why believing in yourself is very important because it all starts with a proper mindset. So as we manage our stress, as we reward ourselves, take strategic breaks, believe in ourselves, we're going to have a better hold of our anxiety levels and in effect, help us have the right mindset for review. Now let's talk about time management. Now time management is all about making it count. Why? Because we don't have years and years to prepare for the boards. We have usually a limited time, and that's why we have to make it count. Now, first of all, you remember, take the test when you are ready. So for some schools, they usually tell the students when they're supposed to take it. For example, for mine, uh, we take the second boards that's offered within the year. I know that for some schools, they prefer that their students take the, the first one that comes along right after graduation. What's important is you make sure that you're ready before you take the test. So why is it important? Whether you're, whether it's something that you like or whether it's something that your school wanted you guys to do, what's important in knowing when the test is going to be is it helps your preparation timeline. Now you know how much time you have left so you can very wisely and very logically a lot the times that you have as you prepare for the board exams. Now, in case you have the flexibility to, uh, to choose which one you're going to take, others do prefer to take it right after graduation because they feel like everything is still fresh. It's still within their, um, everything is still within their control. It's still right up there. And that could be a really good strategy. But remember, do this if you have a strong, solid foundation. Do this if you have enough time to prepare. Because if you're going to compromise 
and you're just going to push yourself before you're ready, that may not be very helpful. That's going to be counterintuitive. Now, so for some people, they want to wait. They want to take the second boards that come in. Um, they want to make sure that they have more time to study, and that makes sense. But the thing here, too, is do not take too long, because otherwise you're either going to forget about the concepts or you're not going to study anyway within that huge chunk of time that you gave yourself. That, too, is going to be counterintuitive, and that's not going to be able to help you out in the boards. So be very smart and very strategic about when you're going to take the test. Next. We have make a timetable or a study calendar. Now I know some of us have been there and maybe there's a 50 for 50% 50 chance that you didn't follow through. That's okay. Do it anyway, because maybe this time you're gonna be able to follow through. Now let's talk about effective timetables. You wanna base it on the topic at the boards, okay? This isn't about reviewing everything that you learned from first year to fourth year to fifth year. You have to just focus on the topics that's gonna come out in the boards. Now, if you're doing it with a review center or if your school is, is sponsoring an in-house review, make sure that when you make a timetable or a study calendar that it aligns with the topic so that if you're going to review a concept, it's going to be discussed and this time you want to follow this timetable. Now, let's talk about the third one. Prioritize the topics that you hate. And yes, that is not a joke. I am very serious about that. Now, the topics you hate are usually the subjects or the topics that you know you're not very good at. It's our Waterloo. It's not something we're particularly interested in. It's not exactly our favorite things to do. But the reason why we prioritize them, because they will pull you down. Say, for example, and this one is a little close to home, so I'm going to use this as an example. In the board exam for nurses, there are five tests, um, and those different tests have different subjects from fundamentals to community health to medical, surgical, obstetric, psychiatric. And if you aren't good at something, chances are it's going to pull your grade down. And for the boards, there's a passing score, and sometimes there's going to be a specific score that you're going to achieve for a specific test. And that's why it's really important to be strong in all of the topics. Now, the thing about these difficult topics or the subjects you hate, you want to master them so when it's time for the boards, you can use them as your weapon. Let me just share a story. So as a nurse, one of my fav um, least favorite things or least favorite topics is community health nursing. I'm very sorry to my professors if you receive me right now. So it, I just don't relate to it. It's not something that I see myself doing. And the review material, it's just not my favorite thing in the world. There's programs, they even teach you what the temperature of the refrigerator is, why you carry around a big ass umbrella when you go to the community, fam, um, you know, community health planning, family care planning, all that stuff. That's not something I liked. So community health nursing is part of, um, if I'm not mistaken, it's part of test two for the nursing boards. Um, and it was, I, I hated that. I would really wasn't um, confident as I was reviewing for the boards. Now, when I got the board's result, I was so surprised because the test two was actually the 90% that pulled up my score enough to land me a spot in the top notchers rank. And it was the highest score among all of the tests that I got. And that's what I want you to think. Just because you hate the subject, as long as you pour in a lot of effort to it, sometimes it's going to be your weapon. It's going to be the one that's going to bring you success. So with time management and making sure that every time counts, I want you to always remember that it's important to determine when the test is so you can plan accordingly and make that timetable. And remember to prioritize the topics you hate as you prepare. Now let's talk about the last topic, and I think this is the most important, of course, because it is the meat of what you're going to do, study management. Now study management is about 
doing it right and doing it smart. I think you've heard uh, maybe once, twice, or even more times, work smart, don't work hard, because that means you're being efficient in your time and you're focusing on the things that you absolutely need to do. And that's what I want you to remember about study management. Now, first, let's talk about determining your learning styles. And maybe the Eduk folks, if you guys are on the call, know about this. There's several theories or models about this. I like to usually focus on the VARX model. It's called VARX because it's an acronym. V A R K. It's VARX, no S. So the V stands for visual, A stands for auditory, R is reading or writing. NK is for kinesthetic or tactile. So if you're a visual learner, you're probably the ones who like to look at charts, you like to look at pictures, you like to, and when you study, you visualize things in your head. Sometimes if you're a little bit artistic, you like to draw things. That's what lets you know, oh, you're a visual learner. So it's important to know what your learning style is, like because if you're a visual learner, sometimes the other study techniques might not work for you. So if you're a visual learner, what usually works is making sure that um, your study materials have photos. Sometimes they even have drawings um, to help you remember better. Um, there will be diagrams, graphs, even tables because it organizes the data and you can see it. Whether when there are illustrations or when you're drawing, that helps you study, especially if you're a visual learner. Imagining it in your head while you're memorizing or studying concepts help you as a visual learner. Now, what if you're auditory? And how do you know you're auditory? You're usually the ones in class where you just sit like this and you tilt your head and you listen. You listen really intently. You don't like taking notes because you'd rather focus on what's going on. You like to listen to po podcasts and you get to learn a lot from listening to podcasts. Or maybe you like watching YouTube videos, giving instructions on how to do things. That's what makes you know that, oh, maybe I'm an auditory or auditory learner. Now, so what then would be my advice for you? So when you're going to start your reviews, one of the things that's going to be helpful is for you to just really give it focus. If you don't want to write, that's okay. Put it down, but give it 100% focus. And just like me, I'm an auditory learner to an extent. That's what I do. I just give it 100%. I just listen really intently. And for some reason, it, I get to absorb it better. Now, one of the thing that you can, things that you can also do is actually talk. Talk about it. Either talk to yourself, explain to yourself what's going on, say it out loud. Just hearing your voice helps you remember and understand it better. Or sometimes talking to somebody is going to be helpful too as you try to discuss your ideas. Another thing you can do is to watch videos about it, listen to podcasts, uh, listen to recorded materials about it. That will help you learn. Now, if you're reading or writing, so that's a third one, you want to take notes when there's an ongoing lecture or even if there's a study material, you want to write it again. That helps you retain it as you write it and as you can see and read it. Um, another thing that you can do is also highlight your notes. That's going to be very helpful for you. Now, lastly, for the kinesthetic and tactile, these people, you tend to be a little bit more distracted because you like to move around and you like to involve your body and yourself as you study. So one of the things you can do is to act out the concepts, whether you are trying to study, I don't know, taking a pulse maybe for nurses. So you're going to have to act it out so you can remember, okay, this is the radial pulse. This is the pulse in the antecubital area, you know, those kind of things. It helps you remember better. Another thing is when you try to memorize, pace around. So you walk around, sometimes it can be helpful too. So determining your learning style is very important. Another thing that you can do if you want to determine it, you can take tests. There's a lot online. Just take the ones from .edus or .orgs. Those are usually more reliable. They're going to help you zero in on what your learning style is to help you with your study technique. Another thing that you can do for study management is practice and tests with rationals. I cannot emphasize this more than enough. Rationals are those, te uh, the rationals come with tests in order to explain why one thing is wrong and why one thing is right. It's 
important for you to take tests to simulate how it's like when you're doing the boards or to take um, when you're going to be taking the test ultimately. But then sometimes it's not helpful to just know the right or wrong answer. What's helpful is to understand why that's the right or wrong answer. Why? Because chances are you might encounter that question again in the boards, but it's not going to exactly be the same question, but the concept is going to be the same. So that's why if you didn't study with the rationale, you're not going to know what the correct answer is because it's not exactly the same question. But with a rationale, that explain which is right or which is wrong, chances are you're going to be able to apply that knowledge into this question that's similar to the one that you took before. Now, tests with rationals are usually available online. There are even softwares that you can download to your laptop or to your phones. There's also booklets, as you know, reviews, uh, review materials. Those are there. Very, very, very important. Do not prepare for the boards without using your practice tests. It will help you think a strong foundation is very, very important. That's what sets apart the schools with um, very high passing rates because we know for a fact that it's not the review, it's really the foundation. So you want to start now. Remember, study to learn and not to pass a test. That's a problem that we usually have. We study just so we can pass a test. What happens there is you forget it after. So you study to learn so that when you study, you tell yourself, this is something I can apply in the future, not just for the exams, but in my profession. So I need to learn this. So how do you prioritize that? Focus on your major subjects because those are going to be the ones that's going to come out of the board and those are going to be the ones that will be helpful in your career as well. It takes less time to prepare and review if you have a strong foundation. And lastly, very, very important, maintain a razor sharp focus. Focus, 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 the most important thing. If you're studying and you're not focused, that's useless. If you have a lecture and you're distracted, that's useless. You may be sitting there, but your time is wasted. It is counterintuitive. Focus is 99% of the battle. You need to be focused for you to be able to understand. If your focus is decreased, there's decreased retention. There's decreased understanding. So what do you do then? If you're sleepy while you're studying, then go ahead and sleep. Take that power nap. What if you're feeling anxious while you're studying and you can't focus? then relax, take deep breaths, listen to soothing music. What if you're unable to absorb the concepts? You've been going at it two, two times, three times, but you still can't absorb the concepts, then take a break. If you focus, you don't need to spend a lot of time in such topics because as you read it, as you listen, you already understand it. You don't need to review so much. You will remember better and it helps you follow instructions correctly because in the boards, guys, following instructions is half the battle. You may have the right answer in your mind, but you forgot to say all but to see the all but none are all except those stupid mistakes. Those are because you did not focus enough. And that's why it's important to always, always focus. When you focus, you do well in everything. So you remove your distraction, whether that's social media, you can always take social media breaks. Did you know that in TikTok is developed so that the average user, when you open TikTok, spends at least an hour in the application. And that is true, you get sucked into that vortex. So be careful about the social media use. Maybe it's games, maybe you're gonna tell yourself, oh, I'm just gonna play Mobile Legends for a bit. That's 20 minutes of gameplay. So be smart about the strategic breaks you're taking. And if you have consoles, even longer. And sometimes it's people that distracts you. Sometimes you just want to study alone. Maybe you want to study in a quiet place. Maybe your mom is giving you too much things to do and you can't focus. It's important to set the right type of expectations for yourself and the people around you so they know to give you the space that you need as you study. So as you prepare for the boards or maybe even that big exam that's coming up, always remember that managing your stress, managing your time and managing your studying is going to give you the opportunity to really do well in the boards, in that examinations. And I hope I was able to help you with some techniques and some tips and also to help you understand how important it is to be prepared before you embark on that life changing exam. Now, maybe some of you are a little curious about 
the company I was talking about a while ago. So let me just do a really, really quick, um, really, really quick uh, talk about my company. So I, uh, my company is Optum Global Solutions. And just to give you some facts about it, we are a Fortune 5 company, part of the Fortune 500. We have 14,000 people here in the Philippines, billions of dollars in re revenue, which landed us a Fortune 5 spot. We serve 120 here in Manila. We have one in Taguig, which is where I'm from. Uh, we have a site in Quezon City at UP Techno Hub in Alabang, that's in the Phil Invest City. Um, we also have sites in Cebu, two sites as a matter of fact. We have a site in Iloilo, a site in Davao. Those are newer sites. So we're really expanding our footprint in the Philippines. And it's it's amazing if you could find somebody or even yourself, um, whether you can find an opportunity to work with companies such as mine who can give you the career growth and the career progression that you need so that you can advance um, advance your profession. So for technology, we have several positions from analytics to data science. In customer service, we have customer support roles. In clinical, that's the one I'm part of. We have registered nurses and USRNs, medical coders. And for shared services, we also have leadership roles. So. In our COVID response, we also want to be an altruistic company as part of our corporate social responsibility. We did help out with um, the different countries that we serve. And in the Philippines itself, we partner with Caritas and we were able to give 25.2 million pesos to aid them in their COVID response. So that's how we value giving back to our community. So if you're curious, if you're interested, if you have friends or relatives that you want to uh, refer, if they're looking for a job, we are actively hiring. We're doing online interviews. It's work at optum.com and it's going to direct them to the different job opportunities that's available. That's it for me. Thank you so much, Sir Mark Ray Espinoza, for that very insightful, really informative webinar. And of course, we are seeing a lot of engagement from our audience. They were already posting their questions prior to the end of the presentation. And thank you also for introducing Optum, uh, one of FEO Campus partners, uh, industry partners, no? uh, and because I'm sure some of our students here would like to also explore their uh, possible opportunities no, with your with the company. But uh, with regard to the presentation this uh, afternoon, um, thank you so much for reminding us about the different types of management that students and graduates should need to prepare prior to the taking the board exam. Uh, kahit ako, you know, for myself, no, I was also refreshed as a teacher as well, you know, as a faculty, about how important to manage stress, your time, and of course, the the study, you know, the, the things that you need to study. And uh, it, it really it takes a lot of uh, grit, you know, perseverance, and of course, uh, razor sharp focus, as you mentioned earlier, sir. All right. Um, I think I like that part when you mentioned that maybe we need to focus more on our Waterloo or that part or areas, you know, that we don't really like in our study. And based on your story, that's really a wonderful story that you shared with us that the, the the subject that you hated is the one that actually made you to be part of the top notchers no? <laughs> so i think that's something that's really inspiring for our students here because uh, you know um we understand what are the subjects that we don't like in the first place even me, myself no when i took my board exam i have this uh, subject that i don't really like you know and i mean subject in antoka even when you're doing the review but of course you have to you have to really focus on that and then that's a good reminder for all of us moving on sir uh, mark we have here very interesting questions from our audience let's start with one of our audience here anonymous mm -hmm. so uh, um did not uh, disclose the name but the question is what's the advantage of acing the exam in terms of employment, so magandang tanong to, Sir Mark, no? Will you get the job faster than those who just passed the board exam? Because you know, uh, we keep on hearing no top notchers, but does that really uh, is it something that we really need to aim that to be part of the top notchers to to have a fair or a, an upper hand in terms of uh, uh, employment? Yes, Sir Mark. 
That is indeed a very great question. And I know that um, a lot of people can have uh, polarizing ideas about it, but for me, it has really opened a lot of opportunities. For example, how well you do in exams, just like for myself as I entered the nursing academy and even for the other opportunities that came my way. Second, it's going to be a great addition to your resume um, because when you're a board exam passer, um, that's going to give you credentials, but when you're a top notcher, your employers are going to know that you're a hard worker, that you want to push yourself towards excellence, that you are willing to put in the hard work for you to be able to get to where you are. And with those assumptions and with those um, insights in mind, they might just pick you over somebody who um, didn't do so well. So say, for example, if um, there it's it's between just the two of you for a really coveted position, um, both of you have just uh, graduated from the same school, maybe both of you have um, the same course, of course, the same background. Um, and the only thing that sets you apart is the competition was able to uh, just pass the boards and you were able to top the boards. Every edge matters. Everything that could set you apart from everything, uh, everybody else is going to be help, helpful for you. So acing and going for that is going to be um, a giant payoff in the end. Yes, because your board exam rate is also a reflection of your grit, you know, the level of your preparation, perseverance, and of course the qualities you know, that would make you really successful. But sir, uh, just a follow-up to that question, I was just also wondering, uh, based on your experience, you know, you're part of the industry, how many years would it really last? No, I mean, that particular part that you're part of the top 10, uh, I mean, in the first part of your employment, it, is really, does, it really matters. No, I mean, it would really uh, give you the advantage. But in how many years, though, no, I mean, how about the others that did not really top the board exams? No, what are their, their um, how can they really make, um, you know, um, their fair share of the achievement of, or of course, to be also valued you know, by the company. Yes, sir. Just of to el el elaborate on that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's a really good follow up question because, uh, like I said a while ago, it uh, helps you get your foot in the door sometimes, right? Um, and it does come up from time to time. Like, the, for example, like getting to speak right now because they were looking for somebody who's a little bit more qualified to talk about uh, topping the board. So you will have those recurring things that come up from time to time uh, within your employment. But and also um, in your employment, you do have opportunities to go up the ladder and maybe that's something that gets brought up. Maybe that's something that allows you to. To again, best the other con uh, other contenders and third, what if you want to have a career in the review center industry? It's going to be a very, very important for you to walk the talk and to show that, hey, I talk to boards. I can do this. I can help them um, do well in the board exam as well. Now, if in the event that you did not top the board, but you did pass the board exams, which is great because that is the main goal in the first place. There will be other things that helps you boost your resume and helps you boost your experience. Um, just like what I did with myself when I took my master's. Maybe you can take certification exams. Maybe you can try to take on additional projects uh, that can help enhance your skills. One thing that's really in demand right now is project management. Another thing would probably be to um, specialize in a certain field. Those kind of things add up to your credentials aside from passing or topping the board um, it also gives you an opportunity really to to tell yourself hey I topped the board I passed the board I can do other things and that's hopefully empowers you to to go for greater things and the thing about passing the boards or topping the boards is that um, primarily it's a mindset it's not just about the achievement, it's a mindset. And if you always have the mindset to go beyond, to transcend your limits, to push yourself beyond just the boards, it's going to be something you're going to bring to work. It's going to be something you're going to bring to your own life. Yeah, so that's really um, ensuring you know, that, and it's also inspiring when you mentioned that if you did not top the board exams, that's not the end all be all. No? You're, you have a lot of avenues and of course platforms and of course a lot of paths that you can pursue to further your career. So thank you, sir, Mark. We have really interesting questions. I think our audience are really engaged in this discussion. I think you were able to trigger their, to help us with this, um, with this challenge, uh, sir, Mark. 
Okay, so there are two. Uh, those are two questions that I will answer separately. The first question was about um, motivation versus self-discipline, and the other one is about the right stu study techniques. Hopefully, I will right. remember the second question. So, um, one thing that I've um, I wasn't able to mention a while ago because I was just getting too too worked up, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm losing. I, I don't have a lot of time anymore. Um, is that also, when it comes to motivation, sometimes it comes after you put in the the push, and that's where self uh, the discipline comes in. When you tell yourself, "Okay, I'm going to study at this time um, because I have had enough rest and <laughs> I have nothing better to do but to study right now," some some people they wait for the motivation to set in, right? Oh, I don't feel like doing it. Oh, um, I'm, I I don't think I'm in the right mindset to do it. But according to research. Sometimes you don't have to wait for that. You just have to sit there, open your book, start reading, and the motivation will flow in. So I guess it goes, it comes a little hand in hand. We cannot, as human, and it's part of our human nature to be motiv uh, to be driven by motivation, but it's also important that we have the self-discipline for us to push ourselves into doing what we're supposed to be doing at that time um, that we said that we're going to be doing it. So it really um, plays a huge factor too in the follow through, in the do this, you have to do this, follow it. It's in the follow through that the whole self-discipline discipline really, really has a strong impact. Now to answer the study techniques, a while ago I was talking about the different learning, learning styles, right? And so the study technique is going Going to have to be very specific to what your learning style is. Now, you know, people, they like put post-its in the walls or maybe a manila paper or cartolina and they write down a lot of the concepts. So by the way, that's more recommended for like the things that you need to memorize. Like for nurses, it's uh, normal values. Maybe for other courses, it's going to be specific theories. Um, those work not for every, uh, those don't work for everybody. Usually those work for visual learners. So you need to know what your learning style is to know what the study technique is that works best for you. It's going to be different from one person to another. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for all those uh, insightful reminders. No, but because you know, in our four years or five years in college, we felt like we've been drained already with all the requirements, major subjects, and here comes the board exam. I, we thought we're done already. But you know, sir, maybe we can ask also this question. Maybe getting also your insights about this: Is it really necessary to maintain or keep the board examinations? Because there are some, um, what do you call this? No, some um, suggestions, maybe or perhaps that. Uh, the board exams might not be necessary anymore. What is your personal take on this, sir, Mark? Uh, should we really keep um, addressing this? Um, should we really keep the board exams for for different for, uh, profession professions? Really, what's your what's your take or your thoughts here, sir, Mark? Well, this is a very uh, very controversial topic. <laughs> I know that there's been a recent um, talk about it, but for me personally, I feel like the purpose, okay, so let's go back to the purpose. Um, the purpose and the intent of the board exams is to make sure that you are going to be able to practice your profession safely and within the standards that's set by your boards, so whether you're a nurse, whether you're a teacher, uh, whether you're going to be an engineer or an architect. So a lot of those is going to be gauged with the board exams. Same goes for lawyers. They have the bar examinations. Now, I know that it's one thing that stops people from being able to achieve their dreams sometimes because they are unable to pass it at the first to second, sometimes even uh, multiple times. But then let's remember that the purpose of it is to really gauge whether we're going to be able to fulfill our functions effectively, whether we know the basic concepts that we're supposed to know to be able to properly uh, do our jobs safely and optimally. So if we're going to use the premise that board exams are developed that way, then board exams definitely need to stay and it's definitely something that we need to prepare for um, because the thing about um, school is you end up to sometimes we could be a generalist uh, of some sorts um, shout out to those minor subjects that feel they're major subjects right <laughs> but in the boards it's really going to hone in and focus on the necessary skills and the necessary knowledge that you need to know and that's what i feel is really important like say for example for the boards for nursing um, there's a lot of factors in there that really measure safety that really me measure 
effectiveness that really measure the way we understand the most basic fundamental concepts in order for us to make sure that our patients recover and we don't kill anybody. <laughs> so it's really that important. Um, so I don't know how the questions are for board exams these days, but again, if it's based on the premise that the questions asked will help make sure that you're safe, you're effective, that you're efficient, and that you understand what you're supposed to be doing as you practice your profession, then it definitely needs to stay. Thank you, Sir Mark. I totally agree, especially when you mentioned that maybe schools, also the academic institutions, may, might want to revisit the intention of the board exams as well in terms of the profession, if they are still serving its purpose. And of course, you mentioned about the, the idea that, that board exams would make us uh, be competent and effective in our profession. I always remember my professor mentioning no, in, in my field, kasi in architecture, you need the board exams because you need a sense of accountability, right? that what you do is something that will be beneficial and what you mentioned about kung sa hospital sinasabi niyo walang walang cost of uh, walang uh, lives at stake also in the construction industry you just make sure that you have the right decision choosing the correct material para bukas yung gagamit ng swimming pool hindi madudulas at mababago ang ulo right <laughs> so <laughs> so it's it's something that would really make you feel accountable of your of your profession that you embrace it that you know that what you're doing and of course a sense of you know, uh, uh, ownership no, of the things that you that you would like to uh, share no, as part of the solution to the problems of the society in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think there's another very interesting question. Hello, mm -hmm. sir. Uh, he mentioned here any, I think this uh, this is from one of our student participants. No? Any tips for the uh, graduates, I think, no? Any tips for the board examinees who are not first time takers? What are the techniques that can help them or help them, you know, bounce back uh, stronger and then passing the exams uh, for the second time maybe. Thank you, sir. Your thoughts, please. This is a very good question. And of course, as when I was still in the review center and I was working with Bukidnon State uh, University as an in-house reviewer, there were some who were retakers. Now, the thing about retaking is it's actually an advantage. It's not, it doesn't put you at a disadvantage. Why? Because you know exactly how board exam questions are gonna be worded. It helps you understand what the, what the attack is gonna be for those questions, how the board, uh, the, the ones who are writing the board questions, the members of the board, um, are, are, are creating these questions. So number one, use that to your advantage. You know how it's exactly going to be. So then with that knowledge in mind, use it to prepare for the next board exams, knowing that, hey, um, there's going to be a lot of questions about, uh, let's say for example for nursing, uh, there's going to be a lot of questions about drugs and I hate pharmacology. So now you know you're going to have to focus. Um, there's, oh, I made a lot of stupid mistakes because I did not notice the all but none, um, the exep. Then now you know to be focused and to be careful about uh, how the questions are worded. The second thing that you have to remember too is that you always have to, you know, bouncing back is going to be a mindset as well. So with that mindset comes the introspection that has to happen so you have to ask yourself why did you not pass right what was it about the board exams that you found really difficult or what was really challenging for you was it now now we're going to go far away from the questions already was it your motivation was it your focus what is was it your self discipline were you distracted did you have a tummy ache that time you know those kind of things so you can use that whatever learnings you got from that whole introspective process to prepare you for the next board exams. So all in all, again, if you pass, did not pass the board exam, you're at an advantage. Maybe you're a little delayed in practicing your profession, but you're at an advantage for the next boards. Why? Number one, because you know how it's going to be so you can prepare for it the way you're supposed to prepare for it. Focus on your uh, weak points. Second is it's going to give you the um introspective <laughs> introspective um exercise to understand um how you are as a learner and what you need to do better um internally so that you will be able to prepare for the boards better the next time maybe even top it 
Yeah, no, so I think, sir, it's really about the matter of perspective and what you mentioned about mindset, right? Positive mindset that you have the advantage now that you know what to do. And of course, it's also a way for us to motivate ourselves because uh, it's not really about the journey, but it's really about your end goal that's really important in the future, no? and to really pass the board exams. No, How many times, no? I mean, regardless of the, the number of takes that you'll be taking, no? I mean, of course, there are some limitations, of course, in the number of takes, but, you know, you'll be stronger when you try to bounce back. So I, I think uh, you mentioned also about review centers earlier, but uh, this question is coming from, not from the participants, but from our one of our audience maybe watching from the live stream. Uh, are review centers really effective, uh, Sir Mark? Uh, because uh, our audience here mentioned, I heard stories that some board takers would enroll in several review centers before taking the exam. Is that really effective, sir, uh, enrolling in a review center and maybe uh, what you call is a review center hopping. <laughs> Thank you. Your thoughts, please, sir. Okay. So for me, it's important to, um, it, it's helpful to have a review center because um, right off the bat, if you're just going to study by yourself, sometimes you don't know exactly um, what the techniques are, what the strategies are, how, what the format of the board exam is even. You just know the concepts. You know how to study the concepts. And essentially, the only test you've taken that's closest to the board exam are the exams that you've had in school. And sometimes it's a little bit different. So when you work with a review center, they will give you the Number one, the test taking strategies that you need to know in order for you to effectively answer board exam questions because review centers are specialists. They're specialists in making people pass the board exams. So there is some credit that goes in that, um, in that aspect. The second is when it comes to hopping, I feel like it's really important because when you're talking about time management, you don't even have a lot of time to study, more so hop. Right, and I think review centers all all review most reviews happen all at the same time. So how then will you be hopping from one review center to another, especially if all of them are hap hopping at uh, happening at the same time? Does that mean you're gonna probably skip a day in one review center? So for me, I'd study. <laughs> so maybe mabigat tong question na parang uh, yeah. What's your what are your thoughts here, sir? Okay, so first of all, like. Uh, uh, to do sometimes you have part-time jobs but as long as you set aside time for you to review and as long as you set aside time for you to be able to attend the lectures that you have to attend then you are good now this is a bit of a secret okay so um, when I was reviewing for the board exams my the, the thing that I banked on primarily is that when I am when we're having lectures I'm a hundred percent present 100% razor sharp focus on lectures. And with that, I feel like I don't have to spend too much time reviewing the concepts already because I understood it already. All I need to do is like take practice tests if I have to. So as long as you focus on one thing, you don't have to keep doing and doing and doing it again. It's going to save you time. That's one thing. Um, second is the distractions. <laughs> um, there will be people, there will be um, events, there will be things that will try to pull you away from what you're supposed to do. You have to set the right type of expectations. Now, I know for a fact that there's going to be things within your control and things outside of your control, right? If it's a job, if you can have it moved around, then that's great. If they know when you're busy, they can't disturb you, that's great. Um, if you have, if you can take time off, that's even better. I have had the staff before who also has to review for the boards and I gave her some time off so that she can focus on um, the first few days that's gonna lead to the board exams. Um, and another thing that you can do is to, so so that's for like work. Let's say for example, household chores, right? Um, you can't talk to your mom, I mean, or your dad or whoever is trying to boss you around. You can talk to them. It's just gonna be a couple of months and I'm gonna be taking the board exams. Maybe you can cut me some slack. Wow, you're not gonna talk to them that way. But then of course you can uh, have a sit down conversation and let them understand that you need to have a set time in your day for you to be able to focus on your reviews and it's your family. I've been told by a friend before, you're not going to be talking in Mandarin to that person. You are going to be understanding each other. You live in the same house. They are going to understand you. So just 
have that conversation. Know that you're, um, you can set aside time for chores, you can set aside time for the things that you have to do, but then you can also have to tell them that there will be a certain time where you can't disturb me because I will be reviewing. Now let's talk about conduciveness because there's that other question, right? So different people have different um, kind of like venues that they need to study in. Some people like to study in coffee shops. Some people like to study in a very, very, very quiet room. Um, and if you don't have those within your reach, you're going to have to be a little bit flexible. You know, things aren't always going to work out the way you want them to, but you can always adjust. For example, um, you have a very, very, very um, loud house and you can't go out. What can you do? You can wear headsets on. You can either play music or just use it there to block out the sound. If you probably want to study with friends, but then they're not there because pandemic, then set up a Zoom call so that you guys can discuss and make sure it's not just about Chikahan, but it's also going to be about legitimate board exam or um, legitimate academic topics. So there's a lot of things that you can kind of be flexible about, things that are within your control that you can adjust so that it works to your advantage. What's really important is you just manage your time very, very well and set expectations, especially if you have other people that's going to affect that. Thank you, sir, for that reminder. No, the reminders of especially the importance of communication, especially if it's within the family. Sabi mo, three months po nag uh, the exam review ako, so three months ako hindi magugas ang plato. So I think it's okay. <laughs> they will understand this. And of course, it's really about uh, your your goal is also the goal of the family. So you have to really make sure that you are communicating well with them as well, uh, engaging with the topics that would make you. Uh, really focus focus on the topics so that you will save more time and that's really valuable from you sir i think sir we're last we're down with the last question mm -hmm. and this is a fitting uh, ending i think no most of there's a lot to un unpack on the actual exam day actually because it's going to be very different number one no cramming that's one thing don't study the day before it has to be a relaxed evening get enough sleep um eat something healthy but not new that's always something i tell my students do not try that new sushi place do not try that new exotic food because if you're gonna get diarrhea the next day you are gonna have a really bad time in the exam because you cannot take CR breaks. Otherwise, you're done. You're done with the exam. All right. So it's the the night before is very very important. Enough sleep, relaxation, no more cramming. Very important. Now let's talk about the day. Be, um, on the day, arrive early. Okay. The board starts at like eight in the morning, but you have to be there like around seven or six. Especially in Manila, you have to consider traffic. Maybe there's floods. Maybe there's you know something that's beyond your control. Maybe it's hard to find a grab. It's very, very important for you to have those into consideration. I've heard of some people, they live, they stay in hotels that are near the venue, just so they're very, very close to that part. So that's um, so that's going to be very important. Um, also, on the day, make sure you have all of your requirements because nothing gives you more anxiety than realizing that you forgot some of the paper requirements that you need to have. Now, when you're sitting for the boards, that's it. The first thing that you have to do focus. And how do you focus? You have to be able to keep your anxiety levels to at least a mild state. And there are several ways you can do that. One thing you can do is deep breathing exercises. Very, very helpful. Inhale for a couple of seconds. Exhale through your mouth for a couple of seconds. Do that several times. It's going to decrease your higher heart rate and it's going to make you feel less anxious about taking the boards. The second thing is when your mind is already clear after doing all those um, anxiety releasing techniques, read the questions at least two times. Um, that way, number one, we make sure that you understand it. Second, we make sure that you don't miss anything that's important. And a while ago, I kept repeating this. Those all but none, those all, those accepts, those are very hard to, those are very easy to miss and sometimes it's going to cost you. So that's why you have to be very careful before you answer um, your exam. And then on while you're answering too, you always have to remember that um, not everything that you reviewed for is going to come out and it's okay, don't freak out. Focus on the ones that you already know. For some people, they like to skip items because sometimes the clues to the questions come right after. 
Um, so sometimes it can be helpful for people. But one thing again, focus. Why? Because sometimes if you skip a number and you and in the shading you did not skip, then it's gonna mess up the rest of the answers that you have. So you also have to be very, very wary, wary about that. So if there's one word that I want you to remember as you're taking the boards, it's this word that I said is part of the study management as well. It's focus. Have razor sharp focus. Do what you can to focus. Focus while you're answering. Focus while you're picking the questions. Focus while you're putting your answers onto the answer sheet. Focus every step of the way. If you're focused, then there's minimal to no chance of an error. And that's one thing that we want to avoid. Thank you so much, sir. Those are really valuable, insightful, informative. I remember in my during the first day of my board exam, I left the house at 3 a.m., but I had enough sleep. No, parang sobrang excited 3 a.m. umalis. <laughs> Kasi natatakot sa mga unforced, ano, parang uh, uh, things that might happen, no? especially that when you follow the Murphy's Law, if something is wrong will happen, it will happen <laughs> during that day. But of course, uh, you, it's also valuable when you mention about the idea that you need to focus, especially. Uh, I think mag-freak out yung mga uh, exam takers when they found out questions that they never encountered during their review. What's this question? <laughs> and I also mentioned uh, with, uh, with some of my students also asking advice then before that when there are questions that might uh, uh, that you feel like the, the easiest question, you treat them as the hardest question as well because there's a tendency for us to forget you know, the easy questions. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And of course, at the end of the day, the most confident test taker is the most successful test taker. Uh, so, um, oh sir, we have a very engaging afternoon because of our topic. Thank you so much for all your questions. Much as would li I like to read all of them, I'm afraid we don't have the luxury of time. Uh, we will ask our speaker, Sir Mark, if it's possible for him to reply to your queries online after the webinar. And there you have it. Before we officially conclude our pep talk for today, we would like to present this certificate of appreciation to our speaker. And of course, uh, we really um, are grateful for his contribution. Let me read the text here uh, for this uh, citation of Far Eastern University Career and Placement Office. Certificate of Appreciation is awarded to uh, Sir Mark Ray Espinoza for his valuable contribution as speaker during the pre-employment preparation talk webinar series titled Tam Natures. How to ace the board examinations given this 27th day of July 2021 at the Far Eastern University, Manila, signed by Maria Carmencita Suva Alfonso, Director of the FEU Career and Placement Office, and Generoso Pamitan Jr., PhD, Assistant Vice President for Academic Services. Sir Mark, before we end this webinar, are there any parting words or final pieces of advice or final thoughts that you would like to share with our audience? Of course. Thank you so much again for the opportunity to be able to do this. Um, I feel like I'm very passionate about the topic, being that it's something that I've lived and something that I've um, been able to do as part of my career journey as well. Um, one thing that you have to remember, and this is something that I said a while ago, don't forget this, acing the board exams is a mindset, and it's not something that ends in the board exam. You can already pass it, you can even ace it, but remember, if you have the mindset to do more, achieve more, transcend mediocrity and push yourself to greater heights, that type of mindset is going to bring you to amazing heights in your career, in your personal life. So acing the board exams isn't just acing the board exams. It's acing your life and acing every aspect of it as you push yourself and make sure that you go for that excellence. You go for that extra mile. You go the for that goal that you've been wanting to, um, to achieve. So all the best in all of your endeavors. Some of you are going to be taking it uh, maybe soon. Some of you sooner. Some of you not yet, but have the right mindset as early as now. It's going to be able to help you not only for the boards, but for everything else that comes after. Thank you so much, Sir Mark, for the motivation to be uh, to ace the board exams and be one of the thumb natchers. And we can uh, conclude that now by an acronym MAP or MAP. You create your MAP, mindset, attitude, and practices. Thank you so much again. At this juncture, uh, we would like to again thank. Sir Mark Ray Espinosa for gracing this event with his valuable knowledge and experience. To all our students in attendance, please do not forget to answer the online student activity evaluation form so that we can, uh, you can help us also improve no, our services, especially in this particular webinar. But I hope we learned a lot from today's uh, talk. We will also provide you with your e-certificate of attendance. 
Again, we would like to invite you to join us in our next exciting pep talk webinars lined up for all of us, especially for our students and graduates for the academic year 2021-2022. For updates, please regularly visit the Career and Placement Office official Facebook page. On behalf of the FEU Career and Placement Office, we would like to thank again our digital partner, um, Shanghai Syndicate and Sir Ian Nevasco of the FU Marketing and Communication Office for making this live webinar possible. Many thanks to also to our dear students who stayed with us until the end now, until now, no faculty members, all those watching us in the live stream, and of course, uh, FU employees no, for joining us this afternoon. We hope that you've learned a lot from today's pep talk. And as we end, may we invite everyone to join us in singing the FEU hymn. This is again your MC, Ron Gascon. Keep safe, everyone. Be brave. Tamarouse.